Welcome to a quick demo of Smart Build Systems. As you can see, I've got some jobs that I've done in the past. Um, this is our home screen. If you're not familiar with it, you also can reach your jobs menu by clicking the jobs at the top and you can see all your jobs. So going back to the home menu, uh, you can set up different styles of buildings that you may frame or sell. Uh, for today's demo, we'll just be doing a quick post frame demo. As you can see, when I click my starting model, it opens up in a 30 by 30 model. And that can be set as your, your different starting templates can be set up in the beginning. Uh, I just have mine set up to open as a 30 by 30 by 10. So in the main building tab here on the right, we can set the size of the building, the length, the height. And if you want to speed up your design process, you can slide this bar on the bottom over. So it allows you to change the size uh, before you toggle to the next setting. Um, so nothing happens. And then when you've made multiple changes, then you can update your size or the height. And when you do that, we can click the refresh button and it makes all those changes. So as you can see, it increased the size of the building. For the next tab, we'll jump into the roof peak. Now this would this would be a barn peak. There's a few different names in the industry for it. Uh, we can do a front peak out or back peak out. You can spec the size of it. We'll just do a, a peak on the front of it. Uh, we'll skip the back for now. Moving into colors next, we have the roof color set. Um, you, we prop populate all your custom colors. So this database may look a little bit different than the colors you're used to seeing. Again, we would set up with your custom colors. So I'll choose a dark red for, for this project. And we will change the wall color to a clay. And I will go ahead and turn on a wainscot trim. And we'll go ahead and set it at dark red also. So as you can see, again, nothing happened. But when I click the refresh button, then it updates my model and what I see. Moving into ceiling liner. When I check on my ceiling or my wall liner boxes, I'm going to get a liner product in the inside of the building and it will also add the framing. As you can see here, when we zoom in and go inside the building and look, we have our standard ag panel for the ceiling and walls with all the trim. If I toggle the shell off, you can see it added the interior girts. So moving to the top left of my screen, we have a few more settings here, openings, porches, lean-tos, awnings, attached buildings, and a few others. So if we start out with a with the porch setting, we can we can do a full length porch by choosing left, right, front, or back, or a corner. Um, in this case, I'll choose the custom option, which allows us to choose where we want that porch to go anywhere on the building. So we can set our start point at zero. We can set our length at 48. And for this structure, I will do a width of, of eight feet, an eight foot porch. And the ceiling height, I'm good with eight feet. Uh, the roof pitch, we'll leave at 412. The overhangs, switch that to one foot. We can frame it with trusses or rafters. And we can specify whether we want to hit the corners of that porch. So in this case, I want to hit both corners. And we'll, we'll look at that and see the difference after it applies the model. As you can see, after it attached the porch, uh, if you want to tw tweak the pitch of that porch, we can easily click the edit button, so reselect the porch and adjust that pitch. Um, drop it down to maybe a 212. If we apply that, we'll get a little more space between our main roof. For the next step, we will go into openings and add a few openings to our structure. We'll start out with the entry doors open up my custom catalog that I've got set up, choose a panel style door, look for a nine light door. And when I hover across the building, you can see where it's going to place this. It tries to snap to a main post. So if I click once, it will add that entry door and place it near a main post. So we can also add doors and windows in 2D. That's optional. If you would rather work in 2D mode, we can do that. Um, that's the button here at the top, right beside 3D. And we'll jump into that next and place the rest of our openings in 2D mode so you can see the difference between the two processes. So when we go into 2D, you can see the two doors that I've currently placed. And we want to go ahead and add a few more openings. We'll start with a window. We'll do a few slider type windows. We can search for the size. 
choose a three by two and we'll go ahead and place one right beside this main post and another one on the side of this post so for the next step we'll go into overhead doors and we will choose a raised panel style you can search by height and width so if you know your door size you can apply that and it filters out your list so you only see those sizes to choose from when we choose our size door we can also add things like operators or hardware items that you may need to install this door these can all be set up custom to what your company does when we hover over our wall section we can see where it's going to place this door if you would like to fine-tune the placement you can select an exact measurement and specify where you want that door to be. When you're done editing in 2D, we can return and go back to the main screen. So as we return to our 3D view, now we can see what the doors and windows look like. We can fine tune them some more if we want here. You can re-edit here by hovering and clicking on those doors and dragging them left to right. For the next part, we will look at cupolas. So for this model, I'm looking to add two louvered cupolas so we can set up window styles or louvered currently in Smart Build. I can pick the size that I want to apply to the structure. I'll choose a three foot and we can choose whether we want one or two and we can set the spacing so that it automatically spaces it for us when we place these on this roof. So when we look at the interior walls for a second, we'll jump out to our divider wall function here and we can place a divider wall anywhere in this structure. So just for the sake of time, we'll add one in the center of this building. So we can set our offset. I will go with the 24 foot offset, which would be 24 feet off the back wall. And we can set this liner to match or be none. In this case, I just wanna frame a stud wall. So when I click on this left wall, it offsets 24 feet. If you leave your start in length at zero, it runs a full length wall through the entire structure. Skipping on ahead, we have our roof sheeting products. So in this project, we're doing a standard ag panel. We could also choose to upgrade that to an assembly of items, uh, possibly do an ag panel with vapor barrier or whatever assembly you would set up. Um, if you set up other assemblies like asphalt shingles, you can include the OSB and the felt and everything with it. Possibly standing seam with an OSB backing product decking below that. So all types of roofing products or wall sheeting products can be set up and include the materials you need to install them, including the fasteners. We have control over all the roof trims. So if we want to vent this ridge cap, we could set it up where we have a vented closure or non-vented closure. Next, we have packages. These can be bringing in items like labor, concrete, foundation costs, permitting, and, and anything, anything you see on this list and even more that you want to add. We can also use packages to bring in insulation products. You can set up additional items like guttering with packages. You can have your bracing calculated or fastener packages, nails, screws, anything that you want to bring into this job. So next we have the job tab, and this is just your form that you can customize that your sales team or you fill in each time you run a job. So we have a required name that we have to enter. As soon as you save the job, you now have access to all the output sheets that we offer. We have summary sheets, post layouts, all types of drawings and sheeting drawings that can be accessed. We also offer these drawings in a DXF file. So if you use CAD, you can open the files in CAD. We also have itemized material lists that can be downloaded in PDF files, Excel files, depending on if you want to import this into your point of sale system, you can import this material list where you don't have to retype out the order for an invoice if the project does sell, or if you need to give a customer an itemized quote. So we're looking at an itemized job bid this output can be customized to show pricing and quantities with descriptions if you'd like along with the total price and a full breakdown of sales tax at the bottom there's several more outputs that we could cover here and we'll cover that in another session so going to the top again we have our job review page here and this is where you can just review your entire breakdown of the job during the process of quoting you can review your framing your sheeting your trim and at any time, if you want to see the actual cost breakdown, you can double click on the price and it shows your expanded pricing. So by double clicking this again, it hides it. And another trick that we've hidden is you can double click on the job name and it will actually hide the pricing in the job.
so you can no longer access the summary page when this price is hidden. The price has disappeared from the top here. So by reshowing this, we can access the summary page, we can adjust the tax percentage, and we can adjust the markup on the job. So by double clicking on this grand total price, we can adjust our markup on the entire job. Thanks for checking out our quick demo video for Smart Build Systems by Keymark. And we hope to see you again sometime.